So I did a research paper. A research paper. I see that here. I have my I'm, own I'm notes. I'm pretty good at that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, a thousand years ago. One thousand years ago. Give or take. There was a crystal empire. Wait, wait, wait. How long ago was Nightmare Muna sent to the Muna? About a thousand years ago. Legend has it that on the longest day of the thousandth year, I have been imprisoned for a thousand years. It has been a thousand years since I have seen you like this. That's interesting, the, the relatively close timing of those two events. So, one could hypothesize that perhaps in the fighting of Sombra the first time around, maybe Luna learned some dark magic and that's how she became Nightmare Moon, but... The reason I don't think that already is that look at Samra. We saw him when he came out. In the form of a big black cloud with uh, eyeballs in it. Black cloud, also a vampire, and more importantly, his- Also, wait, wait, also a vampire. He has like fangs too. That doesn't mean he is a vampire. He didn't see him drink any blood. He sounded like he was kind of like, blood, it ah, in the few words he says. He didn't say very much at all. But what I noticed was that when he used his magic, right? It was, it had this particular sort of greenish hue, like this particular way. Kind of like how the Celestia and Luna it hair. It was pretty much black. At some points it was black and red. At some points it was black and green. At yes. some points it was black and So purple, look at blue. when Celestia used dark power to show Twilight what that was like and to kind of explain to her what was going on. And then when Twilight used the same dark power, a same sort of effect happened. Yeah. So I think what we're starting to see is that there are two, in fact, distinct types of magic. The magic that's powered by love and friendship and the magic powered by... If hatred and fear take hold... Something else. Yeah, because I mean, if friendship is magic, how could these friendless villains be all magical, right? So maybe hate, loneliness, greed, fear... Yeah, it's a Star Wars Mind killers. situation. Could be Dune. <laughs> could be. <laughs> so, but the, the reason I bring that up is that when Luna became Nightmare Muna, there wasn't any of that. It was the same sort of color magic, mostly. The, the magic of evil... That's just because the magic was dusty from being on the moon for so long. <laughs> and guess what? Ground up moon rocks are pure poison. So this crystal empire, right? Okay, so they obviously knew it was around. At least some people did. Well, Celestia. Maybe Luna. Yeah, it's like they knew. And somebody... The thing is, okay, the guard didn't know. All the guard knew who came in to report it was that I was told to tell you it has returned. <laughs> I am simply to tell you that it has returned. <laughs> Who told the guard? Luna? It, someone knew. Luna, Luna was there. It had to be so, someone from the north had to tell the guard that it has returned. Who now, was that? that? We know it's none of the crystal ponies because they Clearly. they were all uh, dopey dewdrops. So oh. Who was up there reconnoitering in the north that told the guard to tell Celestia that it has returned? Clearly, Celestia has spies. What cover? I mean, look, she's, she's got, got all these she's people got somebody. spying on Twilight Sparkle to make sure she doesn't go all dream gray and destroy everything. She's clearly got people spying. Now, notice how she sent, I mean, she didn't go deal with it herself. She didn't send Luna. She, maybe, knew, she knew it wasn't that big a deal. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. It could have been a big deal. She sent Cadence and Shining Armor. <laughs> Like she's yeah, then she's them. tired of having living them in her house. So the notice how castle. So think about what's going on. She there's a this empire came back. Uh, I guess it wasn't protected. So she immediately sends Cadence, who casts that spell and sits on the throne doing the Celestia thing. Would something similar happen if Celestia wasn't in Canterlot? I don't know. Uh, I really want to know though how this city came back. All right, it's like okay, there was a crystal pony empire. It's a city. It's not an empire. Well, Rome was a city and an empire. That's the same way that New York is a city and a state. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this might be the capital of an old empire. Sure, but I mean, look, they had look at their but military. But only the capital reappears. They so had armor and weapons that looked slightly more advanced than what we saw from the Hearthwarming Eve play. They had lancers. They, they, it was definitely a in the Greco... play, all you saw were props, not the real deal. Yeah, but I think it was definitely a Greco-Roman sort of old empire. The hairstyles when the Crystal Ponies came back were reminiscent of some of the old hairstyles you saw in the flashbacks. Sure, anyway, so the Crystal Empire returns. It's like, wait a minute. So it was around for a long time, yep. and it had someone ruling it. We don't know who. Then it got invaded. It was invaded, and it was enslaved. And then Celestia and Luna went to save it, and they did, but it was cursed, so the curse made it disappear for a thousand years. But not before he was able to put a curse upon the Empire. A curse that caused it to vanish into thin air. So, what does Dracula's castle do? It comes back. It disappears and comes back every how many years? 
I don't know, whenever Dracula fucking feels like it. Sometimes yeah. a year after it went away. I have a feeling this was literally a, you know, with my last breath, I cur Zoidberg situation. Yeah. Sombra was not dying, but being banished. And as he flew away, he's like, fuck you guys. So you're ready for some maths? I'm ready for okay. some maths. Celestia Luna disappear. How long? Thousand years on the moon, right? All right. After a thousand years, you return, right? Yep. Uh, this disappeared a thousand years ago, right? If this disappeared a thousand years ago and it reappeared after Luna was Luna again, it had to have actually, been, if it was exactly a thousand years, it would have had to have been defeated after Luna was Nightmare Moon and not before. Therefore, it was had to be over a thousand years ago. Or her timing on her moon trip, she had an extended or, or shortened sentence. Or it could <laughs> be. I mean, how long ago did you eat breakfast? I didn't. <laughs> so when was the last breakfast you had? Over 24 hours ago. Okay, so you're rounding. It could have been 28 hours, 26 hours. When you're, if it's a thousand years, if it was a thousand years, eight months, and four hours, what are you going to say? You're going to say a thousand years. But it doesn't matter if it was that close in terms of, right? Then there, Maybe you can only... There's no doubt there's a connection between the events. Maybe. So one way, if it's just a coincidence, maybe you can only banish someone for a thousand years. Maybe there's just a way the cosmology works. But no, I see where you're going. Maybe... What caused Nightmare Moon to occur had something to do with what happened in the Crystal Pony Empire. I have at least one random guess. All right. right? So she went and she sa they saved the Crystal Ponies, right? Defeated Sombra. Then the Crystal Ponies, right? You know, everything there was before Luna and, you know, Celestia showed up was all crystal-y, right? As soon as Luna showed up, she's like, all right, it's nighttime, bitches. And the Crystal Ponies are like, what the fuck? We're not shining anymore. Fuck this shit. And she's like... I just saved your asses. Now you don't like it that the fucking moon shows up? I'm fucking pissed. I have a more subtle theory. Okay. So my theory is this. When, oh, look, at, well, look what happened now. So Celestia sends Cadence to sit on the throne. There's no king or queen there anymore. So I'm assuming that Cadence is going to rule Anyone over. Anyone who has wings and a horn can just sit on any empty throne. <laughs> Apparently. So I have a feeling that. And no one will complain. So I really think that Cadence is going to be living in the Crystal Empire, yes. being the queen. No kidding. There. Well, princess. Well, excuse me, princess. If we go back in time, maybe Luna and Celestia went. Perhaps the king and queen were originally a part of this empire. Maybe King Sombra was the father of the princesses, and there's something much bigger that went down. So you think that they would be a little more upset <laughs> if that was the situation? I have a feeling that was long enough ago. Well, it does make you think, though, right? Because they didn't seem to really destroy King Sombra, Sombra. They didn't even it. destroy Discard. We combined our powers and rose up against him, turning him to stone. Right. They didn't destroy anyone. But I mean, he was basically just, okay, he's still basically in those areas around the Crystal Empire. He's still out there just hanging, right? Right? Am yeah, he was banished up there, but... Uh, so I, maybe that's why, you know, he's not even turned to stone or locked up or sent to the moon. He's just, it's just, all right, just don't come into our city. Hang out in the snow, Mr. Fortress of Solitude. But he also didn't go down and mess up with any other towns. He's well, really only up there. So we must be bound to that place. He's one of those place. weird guys who doesn't like it when it's warm. <laughs> he only likes the cold. So if we look at what happened back in the day, maybe Celestia and Luna went, they defeated King Sombra. They said it, you know, they righted everything. I'll bet Celestia left Luna to sit on the throne the way she's leaving Cadence. And then what you said went down. Luna tried to rule them. She's the princess of the night. It didn't go so, so well. It reminded her how, you know, maybe she thought when she was in uh, Canterlot before that everyone avoided her, that everyone was afraid of her. But shunned and slept through her beautiful night. And that this was a way to like turn a new leaf. Now she'll be the real princess. Everyone will love her. But the bitterness in the young one's heart had transformed her into a wicked mare of darkness. Nightmare Moon. That didn't happen. Yeah. And then she flipped still, out, went into the basement, got dark magic. I still want to know the politics here, right? You got this <laughs> empire. What, what's what's Equestria? It's it's a country? It's a continent, maybe? What is it now? Uh, clearly, it's a principality. So perhaps this was the empire with the king and queen from long ago. Stuff went down. It disappeared. Uh, Equestria was just one of possibly many kingdoms that came up, or I guess principalities, that cropped up and maintain control. Kind of like how Gaul and Britain mm -hmm. had to kind of go it on their own when the Empire received. Pretty sure the real story of Friendship is Magic is the conquering of the entire planet by <laughs> <laughs> Equestria. It's like Heartswarming Eve happened. It's like, okay, we got scared away by monsters. We moved to 
Canterlot, everything's all good, right? Well, now those monsters were sent away. They could, they reconquered their previous land. They just moved away from Look at even old flashbacks right? when Granny the Smith's Appaloosa, family was there. Appaloosa. Appaloosa. They're pushing out. So right? recently, they're Granny sending Appaloosa Smith is out. Conquering. Yeah, they, exactly. They, added the, they, they subsumed the Crystal Empire. What's next? They're going to subsume Zakoras, the zebras? So Sombra's out there. Also, the cold and snow and all this other BS is out there. So even if he weren't there, they need this magical power constantly running to keep the Crystal Empire city warm, warm, mm -hmm. habitable, mm -hmm. all these things. Now, Cadence could do it with her princess powers, but only for so long. They needed that uh, lens. Like, it was basically like a capacitor or a lens for love and friendship. <laughs> Crystal heart, right? Of course you can't. The whole purpose of the crystal fair is to lift the spirits of the crystal ponies so the light within them can power the crystal heart so that the empire can be protected. So I think it's a capacitor because notice this everyone in all the crystal ponies, sure, they're crystally. All right, we got that, right? They don't have, there's no unicorns and there were no Pegasus crystal ponies. They were all just earth ponies, but crystalled, right? So Really, they couldn't do any magic on their own. They needed something to do it for them. So well, Earth ponies can't either. They just have the innate magic of you know right. being a pony. So they needed this crystal heart absorbed all of that magic for them. It was like the collective horn that none of them had. And then it led <laughs> the princess or the king back then. So now I have an even deeper theory. So back in the day, King Sombra ruled over everyone. Well, clearly, and, and also late in the day, right? But see, they, they specifically said that that heart was a relic. That means it was someone's heart, some pony heart, which is why it was so big. Horses have gigantic hearts. So perhaps, except it was shaped, I guess that's what pony hearts look like. At least so. crystal pony hearts. It had to be the heart of a crystal pony. And it had to be very old, older than a thousand years because they were using it before Sombra showed up. The last page of the book mentioned a crystal heart as the fair centerpiece. So I used my magic to cut one out of a crystal block. So perhaps King Sombra, in his infinite wisdom, knowing that he could not maintain the shield forever, you know, the empire is finally falling, maybe just for, due to longevity or whatever. So he removes his own heart and then he sets it up as a relic to be able to maintain the power outside of himself. Well, no, but then by not having a heart, he slowly becomes corrupted by dark forces. Here's what really happened, right? And this is why you're wrong about the vampire situation. He king, looks like a vampire. He's probably not actually a vampire. King Sombra was king of the Crystal Ponies, right? And he really, he had a Diocletian situation. He didn't, he, you know, no one else could keep this shit running, right? And no one else had, was a, you know, he was a unicorn. Yeah. Right? He was a royalty. He was a king. None of these Crystal Ponies were unicorns. So who could he appoint? Nobody, right? He was fucked. He couldn't even choose between, like, two sons or anything like that. So you know what he did? Is he became a lick, right? That's what he did. He became a big old lich. Which means he took his heart out, and that is the phylactery, right? I got the crystal heart! But being heartless now, his friendship-powered magic wane... Now, it's not just like a lich, because a normal phylactery, the actual soul is in there, and then you're acting separately, but that didn't seem to be the case in this situation. Well, how do you know? Maybe, I think, it, it depends on the nature of what a crystal pony is. The only things we know is that the crystal ponies, without the love and friendship around them, and possibly the sort of precursor technology machinery of the city, notice all those like etchings and the lines and how when they all reactivated the, the heart, they like bowed down to the ground and like lit up with it. There's definitely precursor stuff going on there. Well, that was a mechanism that was set up by the ancient king of the crystal ponies, who could very well be King Sombra, but then of course he set it up and it defended against himself. He was such a forethinker, right? He, he's like, all right, I'm not, I'm going to die, so I have to set it up so these people can run their own shit, which is why no one was living in the castle, right? You know, there wasn't some crystal king who disappeared, right? Who was the last or maybe king who fought he, against King Sombra. He set shit up so they could run it themselves. Well, maybe he set it up and then he disappeared because right. he knew he was heartless and would eventually one day become... Well, you know, and maybe that, or maybe it was just he set it up. This will defend against pretty much anything, Including me, maybe, if that has to happen, and it did happen. Now, that is prescient, mm -hmm. because look at what Celestia and Luna were talking about before they told Twilight to come. She will succeed at her task, and when she does, we'll know that she is that much closer to being ready. I have every confidence you will succeed. And when you do, 
I'll know you are ready to move on to the next level of your studies. In the end, it must be you and you alone who ultimately assists Princess Cadence and Shining Armor in doing what needs to be done to protect the Empire. This is going to be a big test. And, you know, they're going to, like, this is the next phase for Twilight. She has to be ready. She has to do this all by herself, like little brother. <laughs> little brother. <laughs> <laughs> and... What's interesting about that is that at the very end, when everything was restored again, and they tell her she passed the test, you know, being selfless and everything, mm -hmm. which probably is really important because Twilight's magic has gotten way more powerful lately. She can teleport without problems, just mm -hmm. trivially. She can alter gravity on a fundamental level. Whoa. She can learn the evil spell just by seeing it. did you learn to do that? That was a little trick Celestia taught me. She saw Celestia do it once. And it'd be like if that Luke Skywalker is hanging out with Darth Vader. Darth Vader does force lightning once and Luke's like badass and immediately does it. Pretty sure she's passed the, uh, she's already had the Empire Strikes Back. We're entering Return of the Jedi territory. But I think this was the test of, is she suitable for whatever bullshit's coming? And you know that bullshit's coming in about 11 episodes. If the bullshit's coming, how did they freaking, if they know it's coming, why do the Celestia and Luna are so fucking lazy? They all never do shit on their own, ever. So this is why I wonder if Celestia knew more than she let on. No wonder, and always, I know and they're always she knows getting, more They're than always getting on. trapped in shit, right? It's like, Celestia, yep, Nightmare Moon shows up, oh, Celestia's gone. Right? Oh, Discord shows up. Up, oh, Celestia's, you know, can't do shit. Well, no, right? she just oh. didn't do anything. Right. Oh, trapped in a cocoon. Oh. No, she <laughs> could have fought Chrysalis off if Chrysalis hadn't been so powerful oh, due to so how, powerful. how much love was in Shining Armor. <laughs> sure, great. So, notice how when Twilight went into the mm -hmm. basement and used the evil magic, because that was the obvious thing, it opened the door to a trap. Only good magic open the real door. So here's what I suspect. It was King Somber who set that up. That is his heart. He hid the heart there and made a trap for himself. If dark magic was used, it would open the door to a false reality and hopefully trap the person in there forever. But instead, Twilight was smart enough after Spike snapped her out of it to use good yeah. magic and get to the that's, actual place where the phylactery yeah, or whatever was hidden. That's, that's, you, need, you need some sort of explanation like that to be like, why did was he able to hide it but not destroy it and, you know... Well, I hit a banana and then I could not find it. But I might just be dumb. You, you, I think you might be dumb. <laughs> yes. But at the very end, when you know uh, Twilight had passed the test, she's clearly selfless. She's able to wield power with responsibility, look for, look out for others above herself. You know, all these kind of basic things to be a princess, especially a conquering princess. Luna pulled out this big black book, and I wonder what that book says. I wonder if there's some sort of prophecy or some sort of plan that's coming to fruition. Uh, they apparently like to keep a lot of secrets up there. Ooh, I don't think there's anything in any of my books. There wouldn't be. Few remember it ever existed at all. You know, all sorts of uh, no -sees Luna and... looked kind of uncomfortable with what was going on, too. I, so, I have one final sort of theory. Mm. I think this is a test that Luna was also given... And I think that Luna failed it and became Nightmare Moon. Who knows? I think that is why Luna was so uncomfortable when Twilight was being given the same test. <laughs> Two more things to back up this theory. We know it's a relic, right? When part of Sombra's horn got cut off by the shield, turned into a crystal. It did. Okay. Only it was a black crystal. <laughs> and uh, Celestia, you know, obviously could turn... She had that piece of the crystals in her uh, throne room that could turn into the evil black crystal or the good crystal. But then clearly, you know, they call them the crystal ponies. I think that just, you know, you saw at the end, everyone was crystallized. Including Spike. Spike, right? It's, I don't think a crystal pony is it's just an earth pony, pretty much. It's not anything special. But it's an earth pony living in, within the radius of exactly. this crystal. You, if you live in the crystal area, yeah, you're fucking right. That's the same, you know, that's, you could take the crystal piece back to Equestria and it's all right. I do so wish it was permanent. It's, there's nothing special. A crystal pony isn't special other than it's a way, excuse for them to sell an extra toy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we need to sell crystal ponies now because we already sold all Pegasus's earth ponies and No, a crystal pony is that's a special place. Kind of the, right. the, because it has nothing, it's not a different race of ponies. It's regular earth ponies who are living if if any earth pony went to the crystal place, they would be all crystally. 
You know, it's not Which, the, it doesn't, you know, a crystal pony is like saying, oh, a New Yorker, right? <laughs> it's like, you leave New York, yeah, you're not, you're not a New Yorker right So, now. if this artifact is required to keep this place safe, partly because it's in, you know, the frozen Well, north, I don't think it's that artifact is required to keep it safe. It just happens to be that they need a way to keep the place safe in the frozen north. That's yeah, so the, this that's, artifact... That's every place has some sort of thing keeping it safe. So, I think... Equestra itself, like Canterlot in particular, in the areas around that, the thing that's keeping it safe is just Celestia with raw power, or she's got something that she's hiding still. Well, I think there's a lot of things keeping various parts of Equestria safe. Right? So the Everfree Forest is keeping itself safe. I still think it is by design. The sisters are leaving that place completely untouched for a reason. Well, you know, you don't want people living in your old castle. Of but why not? Sisters. Why not? <laughs> I mean, no, maybe, your secrets are there. <laughs> I don't think there's any secrets there. I think that is just to remember what happened before so they never right. repeat it. The point is that's a common theme in the show from episode one is that if ponies aren't taking care of a place, the place just basically goes bleh, right? If you don't, you need Earth, you need Pegasus taking care of the weather. You can't even, you need even ponies to take care of the animals, right? If there are no ponies there actively, constantly working to take care of a, a land, that land goes to shit and evil immediately, and it either becomes wild or is the Everfree dangerous. Forest evil? It's not. It's just wild. It is There's cruel, evil but it is too. not mean. There's evil shit there too. What that that, that big kitty manicure? But pretty much any place that isn't actively being taken care of by ponies just falls apart and, and into ruin or evil or something. And anywhere ponies live, they need to actively protect and shield and defend and care for and such. Right, which is why pony expansion is not easy. Which maybe is why you know Celestia, you know, we, we just alluded to her as a conqueror, but maybe she's just expanding as much as possible because anything they have is so tenuous. So you see, most conquerors would justify what they're conquering, saying that it's a war of consolidation. A unified empire is stronger than a bunch of disparate pieces. <laughs> so maybe she's Kellising, preparing for a coming war. Mm, who knows? 